why are minerals important? And is it true that food isn't giving us the mineral punch it used to give years ago? And why would that be? Yes. Well, let's start with the, the last question first, which is why isn't food providing what we need anymore? And it's really interesting. We may have said this before, but it's always good to hear it again. When a plant grows in the soil, and even if you're eating meat, those, those animals ate plants, okay? So this is part of the same chain. When a plant grows in the soil, the way that it creates all of its structure, and in fact, all of the structure in your body is made of minerals. Now, in nature, when a plant grows in the soil, it grows and then at some point it dies and it decomposes and all of its mineral content goes back into the soil. But we, mm -hmm. in our infinite wisdom, we cultivate we grow plants in soil and we take it away from where it grew and we eat it over there or we feed it to an animal. And that soil, when it's been cultivated like that for hundreds and in some cases thousands of years, that soil becomes extremely depleted of minerals. Now, you could say, well, wait, why don't we just throw some minerals back in that soil? But like your body, the replenishment system for minerals into plants is very complex and you can't just put rocks and shells and bones into the soil and expect the plant to be able to utilize it the same way you can't put rocks and shells and bones into your body and expect your body to know what to do with most of it you see yeah yeah so, that makes sense. so they say that to get the same nutrition from an apple and we have we have studies that show this if, and we could put that in the show notes the link to it so because people often ask me is that really true and just so you know, I mean, I totally support people who want to do food as medicine. I agree. Yes. Food is medicine. And that's why I say plant-based minerals are food. <laughs> they are yeah. food as medicine, okay? They're not labs formulated supplements, okay? Right. So, so when you eat an apple today, or excuse me, if your grandfather ate an apple, today you'd have to eat like six apples to get the same amount of nutrition. It's that big of a problem. I'm telling you, in the 1930s, they had a whole session of, con of Congress about the problem of mineral depletion in the soils. And what have we done since then? Nothing. Because they cannot figure out how to, they can get nitrates, they can get, you know, all sorts of other things back in the soil, but bioavailable nutrition is hard. Even in regenerative farms, I mean, and I, and I wanna go back to this concept because I think this is, I don't want people to miss the importance of what you just said. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you from our own gardening, uh, I live mm -hmm. in California, we've gone through a lot of droughts. And so over the last couple of years, my husband and I decided to pull out all the grass and to do vegetable gardens. And one of the vegetable gardens has a artichoke plant. And my husband is a protector of the environment. He knows a ton about regenerative soil. And so when this artichoke plant would die, he would say to me, just leave it. And I was saying, you know, it looks so ugly. It's in our front yard. And he's like, just leave it. And so we have continued to let this plant die and go into the soil, and then we don't do anything other than deal with how ugly it looks in front of our house. <laughs> and then each year it grows back stronger and stronger mm -hmm. and bigger, and it tastes mm -hmm. better. So there's mm -hmm. a classic example to me of a little microcosm of regenerative care for your garden. What I hear you saying is that conventional gar farming, you grow a crop, and then you get rid of the crop, you till the crop, and now after you've tilled the crop, you have dead soil. Nothing mm -hmm. was allowed to go back in, and then you grow the next broccoli or you grow the next. So, so we from the model that you just said, we're pr it's pretty clear if you're eating food from a conventional farm, it is nutrient absent. There's, it's just, it's, it, it's not giving you what you need. But what about if I go to a regenerative farm? Do we have any signs that that type of farming is giving us the mineral punch that we need? Well, it's definitely better, but it's still not enough. 
And again, this is just the simple reality of when you grow in that soil and you take most of that plant away and you eat it somewhere else, yes, some of the plant material ends up going back in, but it's not the whole thing. The other thing is that to create like humic and fulvic. So what we've, we know about uh, mycelium. So mycelium are these organisms or fungi that live underneath the soil and they deliver nutrients to the roots of plants. And do you know what they deliver? They deliver fulvic and humic, packets mm. of fulvic and humic. So there's this process of decomposition of freshwater plants. And in that decomposition process, there's some specific microbes in a particular sequence of events that happen that turn into humic and fulvic. If you see a pond and it's a brown, that's actually freshwater plants decomposing and becoming humic. Okay. okay. And this is what happens in a compost pile. Now, the problem is most compost people leave doesn't get broken down enough. So mm -hmm. it has to get broken. It actually takes like, I don't know what the actual length of time is. I should know that, but I don't, but much longer than you'd expect. Okay. But what are the regenerative farmers using? They're using humic and fulvic on their gardens. So you, what you guys should do, Mendy, is take some of our minerals our humic, the micro boost. And in the fallow season, I want you to put it onto the soil, just spray it on or, you know, water your whole garden with it. And then watch wow. what happens with your plants. Oh, you know, it's funny. Zach Bush told me years ago to do that with Ion Biome. And it really, cause he's like, it'll put the good bacteria in. I, that's a brilliant idea. And I, and I'm, de I definitely will do that. I love, I love that idea. So with that in mind, knowing and, and the where I also have to say where I know my brain goes to in this conversation is, holy shit, our, mo our soils are in such bad shape mm -hmm. and food as medicine is becoming more and more difficult to say. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we also have these toxic, this toxic environment we're living in mm -hmm. and women on top of that have birth control they've been on for years and antibiotics and antidepressants. And, and now we've got a, a huge influx of HRT and bioidenticals. And then you throw Ozempic in there and like all these medications. And mm -hmm. from what I know about many of these is they're destroying the microbiome. So even mm -hmm. if I choose to eat food, that comes from a regenerative farm that is well, has lots of nutrients in it. I also have to make sure that that food hits a gut that has plenty of microbes that can pull the nutrients out of that food and put it into our system. That seems mm -hmm. like a very com complex problem that I'm not sure even the healthiest of us are able to overcome. So my mm -hmm. next question to you is twofold. One is, do you agree with that statement? Do you have thoughts on that statement? And what are some real telltale signs for our listeners that you may not be getting enough minerals? What, one thing I want to say is that because our food supply is lacking in minerals, there is actually a term for micronutrient deficiency, and it's called the hidden hunger. Oh, you and I talked about this. Most, yes. And isn't that what so many people are feeling? So, you know, particularly when we're trying to affect our health and we're trying new diets or we're trying or ways of eating and things. And, and, you know, you go to the fridge, you eat in dinner an hour later or half an hour later, you're like opening the fridge, looking for that thing that's to fill that void. And what I say to people is what if, that feeling is just your cells saying, I need minerals. Yep. So yep. if you are constantly feeling cravings for sugar and salt, you know, these, this absolutely can be mineral deficiency. I'll tell you an example. I just went away. I was traveling for two weeks and wouldn't you know, the mineral geek doesn't bring minerals on her trip. <laughs> like, hello, um, <laughs> happens to the best of us. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. The, <laughs> by the end of that two weeks, I was actually with my family and I found myself craving sugar, like carbs yeah. and sugar. 
And I'm not a carb and sugar craver. So that it was like, I was like, wow, this is the minerals. This is absolutely the minerals. So, so that's the first piece. So things that people don't think of as mineral deficiency, like anxiety, constant mm. low level anxiety, mm. panic, yeah. depression, blood sugar irregulation, not being able to sleep through the night. Mm. I mean, sleep and minerals is absolute. I mean, we know magnesium will help people sleep. I don't recommend yeah. using magnesium for sleep that way, but that's another conversation. But hair loss, of course, and you know, the obvious things, but these, those in the brain fog, absolutely. So we have, and, and also having a struggle managing your anger, like mm. kind of that mood dysre dysregulation. And that's really big with kids kids who have lots of outbursts, you can give them minerals, full spectrum minerals, and it can literally change them dramatically. We have a great story on our website about that.